right. Welcome, everyone. Um, we had about, I don't know, 35 people register for tonight, so we may have a few more people join us as we go. Um, we're really glad that you could um, join us for our meeting. And uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Nathan Wong. He's our, one of our leads for uh, DIVA. Um, he uh, leads our um, farmer's market pop-up. Um, and has been instrumental in helping with both our National Drive Electric Week event and many other things recently. So thank you, Nathan, and um, I'll turn it over to you. Hello, everybody. Um, like Chris said, I'm Nathan. Um, I joined Diva a little bit less than a year ago, um, and it's been exciting to meet everyone in the group and help out with the farmer's market. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully everyone can see the, the share screen for our DIVA member meeting. Um, member, um, mm -hmm. to stay on mute until um, you want to talk so that um, everyone can hear the speaker clearly. And then, as Chris also mentioned, we are recording this video in case you, ever, you need to see it again or if you have friends who are interested. Um, before we get into more presentations, um, um, let's usually we start with um, hot topics. So if anybody had certain questions they want answers or certain um, topics of the day of the month that you want to discuss with the group, um, this would be the right time to do it. You either you can put it in the comments or unmute yourself and um, speak to the group. Yeah, I, I just recently got a Kia Nero um, EV, and I'd be interested in thoughts about um, warranty, um, extended warranties, or in order to protect parts uh, critical for the auto driving and so on. interesting does anybody here have some expertise in in uh well i i my suggestion would be and i'm sorry i missed the vehicle that you purchased which one was it uh, kia nero uh ev okay hey did you get it new or was it used it, it's new new okay i i think what i would do <clears throat> at least personally because I almost never, ever buy an extended warranty because they're usually not worth it. Um, what I would do is you should have at least a three to four year warranty on the vehicle. So just just wait and see how it does. If it's if it's fine and reliable for the first three years you own it, you're not going to need an extended warranty. If if you have a lot of trouble, <laughs> then maybe it'll be worth it. It just it just really depends. You know, some 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 vehicles even even on a global basis they're really reliable but sometimes you just get a lemon and so you know you just have to kind of play it by ear that's that's my thought I, I can't I can't say you know well you should always get in a warranty or you should never get a warranty it's just really you have to wait and see how your vehicle does and then make your make the call then yeah that, that was my assumption and but uh, you know assuming that it made sense Uh, my name is Zach O'Donnell, and I'm. We own a. I own a. Or my wife and I own an Ionic Five, and um, a plug-in hybrid SUV. And um, I am interested in if this group tracks or looks into charging stations and where they are, and in Davis or in, and even in Woodland, um, you know, local area, Dixon, whatever. And um, rates them or knows anything about uh, future installations that are coming up or anything like that. Are you a new owner, uh, Zach? Yeah, within a year. Yeah. So are you already, are you already familiar with PlugShare.com? I am. Yeah, that's yeah. what we found generally the best stores. Because like, people often leave comments on particular, uh, whether they had problems in a a charging station or not yeah well is there any kind of um tracking of 
planned installations in the, in the greater area, you know, like future. I mean, we, we use Electrify America primarily because it came with our car mm. for three years so or two years. Anyway, so I'm just wondering, and I can tell you that site at Bank of America is overwhelmed most of the time. And, uh, you know, the, when one of the one or two of the uh, chargers goes down, it makes a big Im impact. So I'm just wondering if you there's a I don't know how all that thing must go. They obviously have to go through the city to get some kind of permit. So I don't know if there's any tracking of that or or future sites planned by companies or anything. Anyway, that's so. So, Zach, some of the future site stuff, unless it is being paid for with sort of government dollars, it typically it's it just lands so like the bank of america stuff it went through permitting with the city and the the permitting staff didn't even notify our sustainability director who you know was a surprise as us to see those land where they did and when so i think um some of especially the business related ones it's it's really um we try to kind of keep track a little bit and um re, you know tell people we did a presentation at a diva meeting a few like it's now it's more than a year ago um, about where all the stations are in town the city of davis is also planning um the installation of some new um some new sites um over the next year um but it, we're we're still unaware still not we still we don't really have a schedule for how that's going to happen um and then um we try to share information about big business decisions so you know a lot of hotels are installing um charging devices a lot of specific businesses are doing partnerships with some of those charging providers and uh, we're seeing all of that pop up in um, random places really in the community so I don't, you know, other than plug share, I don't know anywhere that, that where, you know, the actual devices, when they get installed, where it, where they appear, that's the primary location that you can find out that information. Yeah. And plug share, is, people are starting to more and more put their plans essentially in plug share by showing a station when it's under development. So you'll see uh, often in plug share uh, stations that are not uh, ready or running, but they're uh, still being uh, in, installed. So keep an eye there for future stations as well. Does that have a particular color guy? You know how we have, you know, different colors for yeah. different kinds of stations. Is that, can they, can you, when you look it, at it? I think Sacramento it's the same Valley. color as, as a station that's down, which I think might, I don't know if that was gray or some other, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but good question. Yeah, there was, um. okay, well, I'll, look more at that app because i do have it but we haven't used it that much i mean the other day i used it i was in woodland um at the um uh, best buy area and there's a supposed to be some sites near red robin but they're all they're out of commission and there are three of them and they look like they're out of order and it doesn't look like they're ever going to get fixed <laughs> if you look at the, what they look like so um so let's just interesting to know um where these things are going that's all i mean i'm yeah. not asking for people to solve problems i'm just wondering if there's a, yeah. a thumb on anything where you keep up so it sounds like the connection with the city is a little loose so um in order to get information so we'll have to just okay can try to lean on somebody yeah, and find out more one of the it. one of our biggest challenges with the stations is that the ones that went, especially the ones that went in early, they went in, they were, there was a government grant to pay for it to go in, and, um, and it was sort of tossed, sometimes it was just tossed to the owner of the property. And they didn't, after the uh, funding period was over, they didn't really have much interest in you know, keeping up with it and keeping it operating. So uh, that's becoming a little bit of a challenge. But PlugShare generally will, you'll be able to tell PlugShare whether a, a, a station site is up or down or problematic. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Do we have um, uh, any new folks in the room that are EV curious that have, have questions?
Maybe I will ask a question though. Of, uh, for those people that have an EV, especially, uh, how many are actually still under the um, your purchase plan of free charging for a certain number of period of time? Is that you know, kind of raise your hand if you have that? Okay, uh, Zach. Anyone else? What one of the reasons I asked that is it's, it's been discussion for a while now. Is that some of the charges are getting clogged, uh, a lot of congestion because. So many people, instead of charging at home, they're incented now to just go charge at the public charges because it's, it's free versus having to pay it at home. So uh, there's been <laughs> encouragement by of the auto manufacturers to stop doing that because you're, you know, you're providing too much congestion at the chargers. After people stop getting free charging, then they typically will charge at home and such. So anyway. I, I don't know. I mean, my, my experience... Am I? I'm not on mute. I nope. Okay. Yeah, my experience. I mean, I've got free lifetime supercharging on my Tesla, and I don't use it. It's too much trouble to go to the supercharger and charge. It's so much easier to just plug the darn car in. I don't care that it costs me money. It doesn't cost that much. So I just, I just plug it home. I don't, so I don't even use it. I have a, a follow up to that, Peter. So yeah, is too much much of a hassle because it's overcrowded or they're broken when you go, or just you don't want to just drive there. No, because I don't want to drive by. there. I mean, I, I I have no other reason to go to the charger except to charge the car. So well, why yeah. would I? Yeah. Okay. Now if I now if I was going say to the Galleria because I live in Roseville, then yes, I do take advantage of the car the charging because I'll pull into the charger and plug it in while I go in the mall. But if I'm not going there, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna even bother. For us, the the huge difference is the speed, because of the you know the superchargers are way faster than my house. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, but so you know, that's advantage advantageous for us. Yeah, well, it is and it isn't. I mean, typically people plug in at night and in the morning it's charged, so speed is irrelevant as long as it's full when you need it in the morning. Sure, that's Who cares. True. Yeah, absolutely. There are there are times, of course, where you end up running low and you have to run out uh, for that quick charge, and almost like. Uh, so they realize you're low on a gas on your gas tank and yeah. you have to go quickly to the gas station. But yeah. I'll tell you, it is so nice not to have to make those gas station runs yeah. or not to ask your partner to say, hey, oh, on the way to your work, you got to stop by the gas station. You know, that's the convenience of being full in the morning is uh, awesome. Yeah, no, we, we've had a situation a couple of times where we plugged it in to charge got up in the morning to go and found out, oh, it didn't charge. Oops. <laughs> so we had to go to the quick charger, but, you know, typically it, it, it's not, you know, we, we only use the charger if we're going beyond the range of the car. So. Are there any other questions or topics people want to discuss or can move on? Uh, the other thing I was going to mention, uh, Zach, uh, or I think it was about the uh, warranty, auto warranty. Um, the thing you want to look at with electric car is the uh, range warranty on batteries. Because generally there's small issues with electric cars, but not, not like... Uh, an ICE, um, you just want to make sure that the the range, you know, the sixty month, sixty thousand miles, something like that, um, you still have seventy percent or better. That's more of a concern with electric cars than anything else. Oh, thank you. Well, has anybody uh, seen yet a cyber truck? In the flat and in person, no. Uh, I yes, guess. I did see one uh, in Lake Tahoe. It just went by like in a flash. If that was a cyber truck, it was pretty huge. Yeah, if I see one, I'm going to break out laughing. But <laughs> it's big. It, uh, it's bigger than I ever thought it would be. Yeah, it it apparently is really big. When you look at it online in the pictures, it looks pretty small. But yeah, I guess it's pretty big. Yeah, it, it dwarfs any car around it. 
Uh, if you In can so picture many, so um, many ways. Yeah, if you can picture um, the Rivian SUV, it makes it look small. Okay. Yeah, that that's a Rivian in my background there. I guess Nathan will have a problem putting that on the deck for farmers market, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do hear that there is one in Davis. It there has been, or at least was visiting us there. Um, uh, I forget who was it that mentioned it to me in another meeting that they had seen one in town. So that's cool. Yeah, uh, Nathan, you've got to track that person down. I know. I got to put our info in their hands or on their car. I was like. Please come. If you, if you arrange for people to stand on every street corner in an eight square block range and just wait. <laughs> I did. Uh, hey, we, want to, we want to see that. <laughs> it's it's always, if you can, uh, you know, an opportunity when you see somebody with a nice car to ask them if they have a business card um, and let them know that, you know, ask them if they would be willing to exhibit their car. Sure. And, um, it's an easy ask if you're like in a parking lot with someone. So, but you know, you probably shouldn't run them down, you know, and <laughs> now you tell me. <laughs> yeah. Don't chase them down in your car. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the next thing up? Um, I was thinking since um, Robert's here, um, if he wanted to talk, just a little bit answer any qu people's questions about his new car which he is going to showcase this Saturday at the farmers market so let me let me get up um, a different screen real quick Yeah, Robert, if you want to um, maybe just talk about why you picked this um, EV, what got your interest, um, are you happy with it, and um, anything you want to talk about. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I, I've i going back a few couple years, uh, uh, Heinrich Fisker started a car company. Uh, it was called the Karma Fisker. Uh, so I knew about that car 20 years ago. Um, the company went out of business. It was a small uh, sports car. It had the signature solar roof on it. Uh, so does the new Karma. Uh, so does the new Fisker. Um, and this is his newest car. This is his car company that he started. The uh, For what the car is, it, it, it rivals um, some of the uh, more expensive uh, electric that are being offered, like Rivian and Lucid and things like that, but it's coming in at a price point that's pretty reasonable as far as this as this car goes. Um, it's got um, uh, autonomous drive capabilities, but it doesn't have the software yet. A lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff on the car um, still has to be worked out as far as software goes. But as far as the car is driving, the car drives really really well. Um, it's more car and more than I ever thought I would drive or own uh, in my life. Uh, but because I knew and I followed Heinrich Fisker for so long, um, when I found out he was going to be bringing this car out, um, I was excited about it. So I did put the $250 reservation down, which was refundable except for $25. Um, and then they asked before you did the test drive, to put down a five thousand dollar non refundable deposit, and that was that was hard for me um, because it was a lot of money. Um, I knew it wasn't coming back if uh, something went wrong, and that was about two a year and a half ago. So um, once I got a chance to test drive it, I went down to Corte Madera and they had three cars down there, and I test drove uh, the Ocean One, Fisker Ocean One. And I was very excited uh, once I got to drive it. Um, the car is made in Austria by uh, Magnus Steyr, and the company builds the uh, Jaguar, I-Pace, Mercedes, 
um, a couple of different other types of uh, high-end cars. So I knew that the construction was going to be pretty top-notch. Um, as far as the specs on the car, it's quite heavy. It's 6,000 pounds. It's got 113 kilowatt hours of battery, 564 horsepower with four, 543 foot-pounds of torque. It has a zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds, and you only get 500 of those. And then after that, you have to change parts. So I haven't tried it yet. I'm afraid to see what that would be like. So I haven't, I haven't actually used the boost mode yet. Um, but but we'll, we'll have to, we'll have to try it out on the drag strip somewhere <laughs> to see. This car comes in at uh, the car that I have, and it pretty much is the one that you're looking at. Same color. It's called the uh, Mariana or blue Mariana trench, being that dark blue. You can get it in flat black or you can get it in a uh, semi-gloss. I have the semi-gloss, which gives you that flake flake uh, color. Um, the Ocean One has the 20-inch wheels. I got it with the 22-inch wheel that fills the wheel well up just like it looks like right there. Um, it also comes standard with California mode where one button, the top comes back all the windows go down, including the small doggy windows in the back. Um, they all lower to give you an open feel, uh, almost like a uh, convertible. And it does feel like a convertible when you're driving it. Um, and you can do that on the fly. Um, it, it's pretty, it's pretty in, incredible feel. Um, with this uh, tow package I got, um, it's capable of towing 4,000 pounds with the electrical, which uh, gives it the ability for self-leveling, braking, uh, and then also the uh, uh, steering. Um, the price point came in at $70,199, so right at $70,000, $190. So... I mean, when you're looking at the Lucid Air or the new Lucid uh, Gravity that's coming out would be more comparable to this one. Um, mm. I could easily see that it's going to be a third of the price. Maybe maybe not quite that much, but I don't know. The, the price point for that's going to be pretty high. This is all-wheel drive. This car here that I have, the Ocean One, all-wheel drive, two-motor, um, and it's got a range of 360 miles. Uh, realistically, I took it down to LA and I stopped once, um, which was wow. pretty good. And comparatively speaking, the last car I had was the uh, Nissan Leaf Plus, And I have to stop twice with that car. And it had a 230 mile range. So 360 miles is really, really good to get to LA. Um, and it was only like $76 round trip to charge the car. Um, whereas if you drive with gasoline, it's going to be well over $200. Uh, the insurance on it wasn't bad. It's $700 a year full coverage with USAA, which surprised me for a price point that high. Um, this car here, the Ocean One, is is only five thousand of them made. I just looked on the website today, and it looks like they have twenty Ocean Ones available that probably people backed out of and didn't purchase them. In other words, they put in their money, their five thousand, because that's the only way you could have done it, and then they backed out for whatever reason uh, and didn't take the car. But it looks like there's maybe eighteen, fifteen or eighteen of them in California, La Palma. Um, Rio Linda, um, and then a couple other places. And they, they're they all set up as far as um, the tow package and things like that. So there are a few of these cars left. After this is sold, there won't be any more launch vehicles. There won't be the, uh, the one anymore, Ocean One. It's going to be called the Extreme. And the Extreme will be the 360 mile uh, all-wheel drive, two-motor, um, 
and the price point will be less, I believe, than the Ocean One. Because the Ocean One was a uh, launch car, I'm thinking that it's going to be down. Also, they've announced towards uh, just until the end of the year a 1.99% interest rate on a purchase. I didn't get that because the um, yeah, there's the the price point on the Extreme One. Um, I didn't get the 1.99. I just went through a uh, bank and got it. Um, but I think it's it's available just through uh, the end of, I think, January 10th is what I read. Also, the, the, the I think you can ask Fisker, but I think they're going to take the $7,500 that you would normally get on this on these four, uh, this 20 round cars and, and put it take it off of the price of the car. In other words, because they're built in uh, Gaza, Austria, um, they're not eligible for the $7,500 uh, uh, federal, federal rebate. This is the Ocean Ultra, the two, two drive, uh, single motor, two drive, smaller battery, um, still an impressive car, but it's the, basically it's the same car. It's just not going to be the high end uh, and it's got all the amenities that the Ocean One has. And then there's also a sport version um, as well. And that's going to be uh, uh, lesser than that. But none of those are available right now. From what I understand, you can get your order in on them and wait just like they did with the Ocean One. Um, but the, from what I understand, the only car that's still available, that are, is available, is listed right now and they're only Ocean Ones. Um, and yeah, there's a delivery estimate four to 10 days. Um, you have to be careful. Um, this is not a brick and mortar car company. This is um, a startup. Um, you, don't get, you don't get a lot of response um, to questions and things like that. So I did get on a um, what they call a Fisker, and if you and I would do this even before you decide to, if you want to maybe even look into purchasing one or leasing one, um, it's called uh, Fiskerati, um, and I just peruse it, and then I just finally signed up for it because I want to get some more information and knowledge from people that are driving them. They've been out this year, 2023, I think was the first year that they came out, maybe May. So there's some cars out there that have been on the road longer. I got mine in October, 2021. So I've only had it for a couple of months, two months, three months, something like that. And it's got about 2000 miles on it. Um, but I'm rambling. It will be at the farmer's market on Saturday. If you want to see it, I'm going to bring it up on Saturday. Nate um, asked me in, um, uh, so I, it'll be there. Um, and I think it's Nate can between seven and one. Yeah. Um, the market starts at, um, 8 AM and it goes to 1 PM. So yeah, anytime if anybody's free, your friends, family, um, come on by, we have the whole, um, cool Davis and diva volunteers. Chris will be there. Um, and it's a fun time just to talk about EVs, about Davis electrification, um, and it's always nice to have a, a a new car to showcase. It is an impressive car. Um, it turns heads. So it's worth maybe coming out and just taking a look at it. Hey, Robert, uh, how, how, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nathan. Uh, I was, quick question, Robert, how big is it? Is it, it seems like it's maybe like a RAV4 size or is it bigger, or smaller? Um, it's bigger than a RAV4. It it seats it seats uh, comfortably three three adults in the back, um, and because it doesn't have it doesn't have a frunk, it has a what they call an electronic bay or an electronic that's not accessible. Um, everything is it seems pushed forward in the car, so it's 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 um, there's there's it just seems like there's more leg room up front and in the back. Um, as far as the passengers go. And then the uh, cargo area, um, I just made a Costco run today and I filled it up and it still had room. 
it's a good size. It's a good size. But um, I do I, have. I had a question about uh, charging time. Is it charged pretty quickly? Yes, um, it is capable of charging uh, 300 and. 350, but I have, I've only been able to get, when I went to LA, I've only been able to get it to charge to 160. So I don't know whether it's throttling back the charge company or the car is throttling it back. But the most I saw it charging is 160 kilowatt. Okay. Thank and you. that was a three, that was a 360 machine. So. But yeah, my I mean, experience is the, 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 the machine. Okay. But yeah. And, and they were having issues uh, because there was there happened to be another ocean sitting right next to me um and we got to talk and and his was uh sitting at 160 also so i i was guessing it was and then there were some people that were having trouble trying to even get there started they had a volvo um with free charging and of course he had to use his credit card because it wouldn't work on that machine so they were all tied up but this was thanksgiving weekend so it was pretty busy up and down highway 5 yeah. Okay, thank you. I have a question about the solar roof. So is um is is it significant or is it uh just kind of a cool thing that you don't really need? Uh, Fisker says that it's 1500 mile, it adds 1500 mile range, depending on. Can everybody hear Robert? Robert? No. Can, can, no. You, can you try that again? We lost you. Or can't hear you yet. It's uh, yeah, we're not hearing you. It, it might be your headset, perhaps. Still can't hear you. No. It's a good question, Barbara. It looks cool. I'm just, I just wonder how. I mean, I guess you know, it makes or, you know, sunny California. I wonder how much Robert will get, you know, through a year. Right. Yeah, and how and how sensitive it is to being damaged. Hmm. That's uh, a good question too. And if you park it in your garage whenever you're not out running errands, uh, then get that much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that would be my concern is, you know, why park it outside so because the sun can fade it. But, you know, if you're running across the Nevada desert. Hmm. <laughs> well, sure, when you're actually out driving, then it's but but is it is it really worth that much to have the expense of adding it to the car if mm -hmm. you're not going to park it outside all the time? So, yeah, uh, that was what I was wondering. But um it does look cool, and you'd have bragging rights to yeah. one of the few solar cars. Yeah. Yeah, I actually like the Aptera because that one I think is almost like all solar panels. So then it's like, well, okay, I will park it out in the sun because there's not much to fade. <laughs> Darn, Robert, we still don't hear you. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll have to move on, but if there, if uh, your sound does, your mic does come back, maybe we can add you back at another time in the meeting. Um, Robert, you could also try exiting and come back in, see if that helps. Yeah, we're not we're not hearing you. Yeah. yeah Close caption. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
Hey, Guy, were you ready to talk about um, the changes to the IRA tax credit for next year? Or Yeah, I think I can. Just I'm just going to plug in just so we don't, <laughs> my machine doesn't die mid uh, presentation. Let me uh, do that. So my next, Nathan. Yeah, if you're, if you're all ready. right. Here we go. And uh, am I allowed to share? Yeah, yeah. I stopped sharing. Yep. Yeah. Oh, can I? Have I got the privileges? Am I honored enough to be? Let's see. Share a screen. That looks like kind of it. Can't see anything yet, though. Oh, I'm just now, now it's there. working. Now it's working. Yeah, and uh, hopefully, if I go also, um, where do us? Uh, oh. Well, there we go. Um, actually, they're, they're, let's go all the way up to the top. So I got two things to talk about. Uh, the first one is the um, Inflation Reduction Act. As a quick reminder, um, it is uh, had two bit. There were two primary goals. Is what our take is on it. The first is to get uh, increased significantly, dramatically EV, uh, manufacturing in the U.S., particularly with batteries and EVs. So all the incentives and all the, the pressure is to uh, shift uh, manufacturing to the U.S. And they, they're doing that by saying you only can do um, EVs that are produced in North America. They're giving the manufacturers, not just the buyers, but they're giving the manufacturers credit for uh, every kilowatt hour that they uh, produce of batteries. And they've had over well over a hundred billion dollars of investment come into North America, and it's continuing to grow. Uh, in fact, a lot of the companies are actually shifting into Mexico from um, uh, Asia to uh, uh, add more production down in uh, in Mexico. The second big aspect of the IRA, as a reminder, is that um, it's to shift the uh, the enablement of buying or the incentives for buying EVs from just the wealthy, the high end, down toward the middle and the lower end of the um, our population groups. So they did this by adding uh, incentives for used EVs for the first time. Um, and they had put caps on the income if you make too much income. You know, you're not eligible. If you're married, it's like uh, 300,000 for a new EV. It's a cap, income cap or a single about 150,000. And they have also similar caps, about half those numbers for buying the, getting the incentive for used EVs. They also have uh, restrictions on the price of the uh, EV, uh, $80,000 for an SUV type and $55,000 for a regular uh, sedan. So again, trying to say, hey, we're going to, toward cheaper cars, although $80,000 is pretty expensive. But um, anyway, cheaper cars and income caps. And um, they're provided also uh, EVSEs uh, to low-income areas to help provide charging. Now, it's key to understand that this does not include, this is not indexed to inflation. Uh, so every year, essentially, it continues this downward uh, push toward uh, low and middle income. Um, the uh, a very negative thing, unless you got this bar, you can't see it, but I've got a bar in the middle of my thing, but uh, it is limited, the incentives, are limited to your tax liability for the year. So if you, between what you paid in taxes and what you owe at the, uh, when you um, settle up with the government during tax filing, those uh, those end up putting a cap on how much of that $7,500 you can receive. Uh, and you get the choice of, use, of picking the, the year though, it could be the year that you buy the vehicle uh, or the year before. So, there's a little bit of variance in there. But now the good news is on this is that for 2024, the buyer to get that incentive, not just when they file taxes, but at the time of purchase. And it can be for the down payment or just reduce the price of this 
uh, the vehicle. And it's you know the limitation to your tax liability that I was mentioned a few minutes ago, that's gone. Uh, so you um, uh, there was uh, the irony was that they pushed the the uh, incentives toward lower income people who didn't have enough tax liability to take advantage of it, but that second part is gone. So then this whoop I and sorry back here. They were, um, so uh, it's uh, for, again, this uh, point of purchase is for either new or used vehicles, but it has to be from a dealership. You can't go get a used EV uh, from a third party and get that incentive at point of sale uh, or uh, even after. So uh, but some things are similar to the prior to the to 2023, the MSRP limits are the same, income caps are the same. If you tell the dealership that you are eligible to buy, to get the incentive, that you are under $150,000, I think, for a single. Um, and it turns out when you do your taxes, there's a form that you have to fill out. And if you, oh, sorry. And if you um, end up not being qualified uh, because your income is too high, you have to pay back that $7,500. So, uh, you know, you it might be that you could make it the interest free for a year, but um, anyway, uh, you really have to be confident that either the prior year or the current year that you're buying the vehicle that you will fit within the income uh, cap. Uh, and unfortunately, and I had I talked to uh, state agencies to confirm to determine this that the uh, Seventy-five hundred dollars, or the thirty, or the, or the half of that, in some cases, so that does not lower the price of the vehicle with respect to sales tax, full sales tax. All right, there we go. So the second part, the challenge is that they're toughening up, they're tightening up, and they will do for the next few several years, tightening up the requirements for um, the manufacturing of the EVs. Where the battery materials come from, where the manu where some of the pieces are manufactured, um, they're tightening those up, um, and they will tighten them further each year. And it's it's, it's kind of complex, so I'm not going to get into that aspect. But recognize that each year, the cars that are eligible uh, one year may not be eligible the next year, um, or they um, a car find now gets a new. Uh, uh, production uh, location with their production or the manufacturing the new materials for the batteries from a different location and suddenly they are eligible but it's dynamic and technically it can even change mid-year so you really have to kind of if you're when you're shopping for evs it's a little bit of a challenge but you really have to try to uh, look into the evs that you're interested in and see what their current status is and again that again that changes you know calendar year um not from a calendar a country of concern that's another that's china korea iran and such um so material can't come from there uh there's a to help you determine this and it's a bit of a challenge you can go to fueleconomy.gov and get the list of vehicles that are eligible but that site is so far has not been updated for 2024 um it is only it's only it's current as of the date that you look at it, because even mid-year it can change. So that's a definitive source. Uh, so be careful if a dealer tells you, hey, this qualifies, confirm it by going online. And it's highly dynamic. I've, like I said, indicated, this is really changing a lot. Uh, and, and it's even and the scary thing is that we understand that even within the same lot, the same model. If they changed where they got their batteries from, and it's and it's not evident even from the outside, one vehicle might be eligible and another is not. So, um, challenging. Looks like for the next year, these are the guesses we have so far of the vehicles that will receive the credit and uh, the half credit. Now, if you're looking at for a vehicle that's not on this list, maybe a Fisker. Uh, you can always do the other approach, which is to uh, lease it 
there are no restrictions. Income, MSRP, uh, manufacturing the vehicles, those restrictions disappear because they consider the leasing company is really the first buyer, and they're the ones that get that $7,500 uh, incentive. Um, so if you lease the car, you can go to them and uh, they'll take it. And then you can ask, see if they will take that $75 off on the rebate, probably off, off on your lease. They're not required to, but you can always go to another dealership. So onward. So before I go on to the next topic, let me open up. Are there any questions? Can someone confirm to me I'm still connected? Yeah. Okay. Guy, Guy can you hear me? Yes. Guy, can you hear me? Yes. I just wanted to uh, mention you had said that it has to be sold to a dealer. Your For, your used vehicle. Yes. If that's, you that's take the car, if you take the car to Nissan of Sacramento. They will sell the car for you for $300 charged to the buyer. In other words, if you if you sell the car, you advertise it, you put it on the street with a for sale sign on the window, you find a buyer that wants to buy your car. You take it to Nissan of Sacramento and I, you sell the car to them. But whatever the agreement price is, mm -mm. you sell it to them. They're going to add three hundred dollars and sell that car to the person that you walk in there with. That now is, it's being sold. Now it's being sold through the dealer, buy, right? And he got the four thousand dollar tax incentive for that car. So there I, is that yeah, angle. I looked into that back earlier this year, thinking, well, that's a simple solution. You, there will be uh, even used car dealerships. That's all. So it doesn't have to be a new car dealership. It could be used car dealerships. And they, even yeah. if they handle it for you, I thought uh, that's a great solution. I did talk to um, some de uh, dealership uh, that specialized in, in leasing, not leasing, pardon me, uh, in selling used, uh, actually used EVs. And he said, and he's the president of the California Used Car Dealer Association. He said, don't go down that route. <laughs> Be careful. He advised very much against it. It's, it's a similar, they have a similar situation they call bird bird dogging, but where people would sort of sell a car and bring it to a dealership, even before all the CV stuff. They would somehow bring a customer to a dealership and they would get a, a revenue from the dealership by doing that. He said, there's, there's laws and they will come after you. That was his uh, his take, and he's like I said, the president of the uh, California yeah, Used yeah. Car Dealer Association. So I'd like to hear more and, about that. And that's yeah. possible. I, I'll let you know. It happened uh, uh, last week. I sold the car to Nissan of Sacramento, and they turned around. They sold it right to John, uh, my buyer, um, for yeah. a set. So for a set price. That so would be that would be great. He's, he he's got the title. And it's showing all the paperwork went through Nissan of Sacramento. So, and that's not, I that's mean, not a high fee they charge for that. That's pretty reasonable. And it's $300. Well, they charged them uh, for an inspection. They had to inspect the car. Um, and I don't know what the inspection was, but if you, if you figure it, I mean, I sold the car for $20,000. I think he paid twenty three thousand is what they gave him. He gave him a check for, and twenty three something, and he's supposedly going to get the full four thousand dollars because of the value of the car. Right. So he's going to end up paying nineteen thousand dollars for the car. That's great. I'd love to hear more. Yeah, about especially that. since the Kelly Blue Book was eighteen seven hundred. He's almost getting it for Kelly Blue Book. Wow. So it worked out for me and it worked out for him because the dealer wouldn't give me $1,500 for it on a, you know, 
to buy it outright. Yeah. Well, so, that's great yeah. to hear. I, uh, I'd i be real curious to find out, you know, dig in that, find out a little bit more whether we can recommend that as a general approach because it, it does yeah. put a lot of uh, EVs back on the table to be yeah. for sale. Yeah. So used EVs. Yeah, but Thanks, I, I mean, I, yeah, no, I, Guy, I, I would think that uh, Nissan of Sacramento, they're, they probably looked into this and, you know, they've got attorneys and everything. I'm, I'm sure they wouldn't have done it if they thought yeah, they were going to so. be. Yeah. yeah. And it may be only because they all, it's a Nissan car that they're selling. That they're, but, you know, any dealership, new or used dealer can sell any car. So. Yeah. Well, but, but you see, I think, I think this bird dogging thing, again, I'm not a lawyer. I didn't even stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, but I think maybe, um, it has something to do with them thinking that the people bringing the cars in and the buyers in are like employees of the dealership. And so then that was the reason why they couldn't do it. But in this particular case, you know, there was no relationship between Robert and the dealer. He just right. went there and the dealer just basically facilitated a transaction. Right. And, and, and I should say the, the only relationship we had is that was a company lease car that I purchased from Nissan and I bought it through them, so oh, yeah. that could that might make a that might make make a difference possibly. But that, he, but it sounded like when I talked to uh, Robert Feldman over there, it sounded like yeah. this was just a normal thing they do. They will buy your car and sell it to your customer for a three hundred dollar, and it sounded like no, that's a that's a program they have, and not just EVs, any car. I, I can we get them into uh, their next meeting to talk about this, share their program. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like. I'd, I'll talk to Robert um, Feldman, and yeah, that that would be smart to see if what his take is on it. Um, we because can, it sounded I'll, like it sounded like he 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 was well aware of what we were doing. <laughs> I mean, oh, we yeah, didn't go into yeah, it, sure. but that that was my whole idea when I sold the car to this guy. I told him. You know, this is how we have to, it has to go down if you want to get the $4,000 incentive. And he was, well, I'm going to trust you. Uh, and it, we, it, so far, so good. We'll see when he does his taxes, huh? <laughs> no, I, I don't know that that's where it would come up. It's more okay. um, other. I, I, I can also see by bringing in the um, the guy from the, from the used car dealership. And... Um, would it be good to have them both there at the same time, or would that be awkward? Hey, it might, it would be good, but I would let them both know they're both going to be there. <laughs> yeah, you know, just yeah, so yeah. just so there's no, uh, you know, fisticuffs. <laughs> yeah, surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions uh, about the um, IRA for 2024, particularly? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I didn't see the. Um, Ionic on the list of qualified cars for, is that, why is that? Are they a country of concern? It's Korea. No, no, uh, it's no, not. It's not the cars North aren't America. made. Yeah, the cars aren't made in North America. They have to be oh, made. Oh, that's, the, okay. That's the caveat. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. Sorry, I missed that little tidbit. Thank you. Uh, actually, they're trying to work to somehow broaden out the IRA to allow you know, trading partners, they, they allowed the uh, the issues on the batteries to be from, uh, I can't remember, but it's trading uh, uh, trading partners. But um, let's see, it may be expanded. Is that true for this year too? Like if someone just bought an Ionic, they wouldn't get that tax rebate? Yeah. I believe that would be the case. Hmm. Friend of mine just bought one. Check, um, you can go on that website and it'll tell you what the current status is for the what vehicles are there and what are not. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, that's true. Unless unless they leased it, yeah, the Ionic 5 isn't eligible. And if they did it though the year before that, you know, 2022, uh, that's a different story, whole different set of rules. So, and that actually be before, maybe before April of 2023, the rules were different well, because the IRS hadn't finalized those things. You no, know, I think they would have had to purchase it in 2022 prior to the signing of the IRA because once that was signed, then right. then North America uh, assembly requirement went into effect immediately. 
Absolutely, but there's a different set of rules between uh, yes. that signing back in 2022 and um, March or April. I can't remember the exact date yes. of, of there. And there, it was much broader in that limited period of time as well. So right, but but they were their uh, high end days were not eligible. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. All right. Any other questions? Okay, then I'm going to move forward and just talk about this terrible situation we're at. That you've heard, uh, you've probably seen in the news that EV sales are slowing down. And these are some of the headlines from well respected news sources. Um, and it sounds, it really sounds pretty terrible. I mean, EV demand dropping like a stone. Five reasons why EV sales have slowed. You know, alarm bells, you know, all that sounds terrible, but let's look at the data. Let's find out what's really going on. So just uh, as a little bit of an intro to it on the global level, but uh, from Bloomberg, it says, look, all these headlines about how the sales are falling, the data doesn't support it. We're gonna be looking at the data. Um, Actually, that on a global basis, the sales are up 36% from last year. So what about in the U.S., a narrower scope? Cox Automotive and Blue Book have said, and they, they look at it as another quarter, another sales record. 8% uh, of industry sales in Q3 were EVs. That's up from 7% in Q2, just earlier in the same year, up uh, from 6% a year ago. This is an acceleration. Um, and a, a number of automakers have been making quite a bit of profit from them. Now, as Bloomberg also pointed out, uh, some manufacturers perhaps are ho hoping for even more aggressive, uh, more aggressive growth of sales. But look, almost any other country, company and in industry would be thrilled with the kind of growth rate that we're seeing here with EVs. And this is not um, just growth in the number of installations. This is growth in the number of sales each year. And it looks like that's continuing. So what about our region, Sacramento? Right now in the Sacramento region, they from Q3 had one in four new car sales with an EV for the Sacramento. This, uh, we look at about nine counties around Sacramento, including Sacramento County. And that from uh, an early, the earlier quarter, was, which was only one in five. We're going to get 100, we'll probably get 100 EVs in our region by year end, just sort of FYI. So you're going to see more and more on the streets. Now, the California's wide, not broader than our region. You know, they're up from more than 55% uh, from a year ago. So this is what the data is telling us. Um, there are some manufacturers who are, when you looked at the all the projections of the, especially the traditional OEMs on how many cars they were going to sell, they were all often hitting the same spot. And you kind of look, you know, they all thought they were going to take a dominant portion. So that may be part of it, that they're having now to, as they compete, some are winners and some are losers. Overall total is growing. So what do we do? I mean, how do we react in this situation? We um we need to really get clarity out there and spread the uh, the word. Remember some of these key points that the sales are increasing, like one in four this year or this quarter. So uh, prices are continuing coming down. You may have also seen headlines that Hertz uh, is backing off on their purchases of EVs. One of the big in uh, the big reasons is that their resale value has been dropping. Why is the resale value been dropping? Well, new car prices are, are dropping. So that makes that hurts them when they go out and try to sell a used EV when the new EVs are coming down in price. So prices are dropping. We've got the IRA putting the incentives at point of sale. Um this is kind of, we can get this kind of word out and this information out 
and uh, tell people that, hey, you see the headlines, the data does not support them. Any questions? Um, this is Zach. I only have a follow-up to my earlier question about charging stations because I think they're, yeah. the two are related. And I think if you're gonna, if we're gonna be talk, looking at EV sales and how they're growing, you got to wonder where the infrastructure is to support them. And certainly, uh, I hear this from people all the time when I'm talking about EVs and they don't have one and I have one. That's the first question that comes up. Well, price of gas and that goes up and down and that changes people's attitudes. But yeah. the number of charging stations and um, media attention sometimes that they're in disrepair and then people can't trust that they're going to be ready. I mean, I haven't done, I haven't owned the vehicle for very long and we were hesitant to go on a trip to the central Oregon coast uh, this past summer because the number of charging stations were few and far between and you couldn't guarantee that they'd be working and you don't want to be, you know, being stranded is not something you want to think about. So, yeah, yeah these are things you have to, you know, planning trips is an important part of uh, having an EV right now to make sure that you uh, have places you can charge and et cetera. So, I'm, yeah, I think it's uh, be worthwhile for us and uh, to start looking at um, charging stations and where they're, how they're moving forward and who's tracking them. And there must be somebody that's tracking them. I don't know. Thank you. Well, the, um, the, uh, what, and for, uh, let's see, the, the II, the IIJA, I can't remember what that acronym said, the federal, big federal, um, so it was passed a year or so ago. Uh, Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, that's what it is, uh, is to, putting a massive amount of money into uh, uh, EV charging stations. And the first one of those that just came online in Ohio, it takes a year or two for those to to go from the money being uh, passed in a bill to all the, the qualification periods and, the, and then the building and the permitting process and all that. So that's been, it was a couple, that was about two years ago. So they're just now starting to come online. It is a, it is a really major problem uh, for, especially for non-Teslas. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, but Guy, I think I would add something about charging to to this bulleted list here that yeah. basically says, you know, what, what percentage of people uh, charge at home? You know, like reminding people about what all of their charging options Excellent. are, you know, and um, and that there are tools like PlugShare and other things to to, you know, understand what's out there and available for you when you're doing long distance trip trips. But, you know, in your regular commute, you can charge at home. <clears throat> that's that's where 90 percent of the charging is, except for the people that get free charging for two years or three years. But um, yeah, most of the charging is done by home. It's convenient. It's cheap. Um, it's um, you know, this issue on, on the charging station really only comes up when you're doing road trips, I'm, or you live in an apartment or somewhere where you don't have the ability to charge Access. at home. Yeah. And we're we're working on those issues as well. It's getting better. It's but the key is that for most people, they charge at home while they sleep, and. Um, yeah, that's probably, mean, that's probably the most important answer to that question. Yeah, I mean, I'd say I've, I've got both types of cars. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree 100% that the CCS charging stations, their reliability is terrible compared to Tesla. But we've never, ever been stranded. Um, we've run into chargers that don't work. Um, but But, you know, we've always been able to find a place to charge. We've never had to actually wait well we had to wait like two minutes for a charger once uh um, that um, was that was it have you done any road trips um out of the area we have a oh yeah less a fairly high percentage of yeah, yeah. well i mean define time. define out of the area i mean we've gone to the to the to the coast we've gone to sonoma yeah. we've gone to bay area i've gone to, to reno um so and 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 never had a problem and 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 what i tell people you know, if they're, you know, a little 
concerned about it, you know, well, first off, I tell them, number one, if you're going to take a lot of road trips, well, for now, maybe you should just buy a Tesla. Uh, yeah. But if but if you don't mm -hmm. want a Tesla or you're not going to be making very road trips very often, when you do make a road trip, just stop early. You know, so so if you've got 50 percent range or 40 percent range, pull in charge. That way, if that charger is down, like the whole station, you got enough charge to get to the next one just in case. And then that way, your your odds of not being able to charge are much, much reduced. Now, and you granted, can get lunch it, at the same time. Yeah, and, and it, it might take you a little longer because, you know, typically it charges faster when you're like at 20% up to 50, 60%. But, but, but it's better to be able to charge a little slower than to not be able to charge at all. So, yeah. so that's... That's that's what I tell people. I and I, I mean, we're well. You and I were both 100% uh, electric. We have no gas cars, so, or maybe you do. Do you still have that expedition, or did you get rid of it? Oh, we got rid of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No so, gas cars yeah. around. Yeah. So no gas cars. Yeah. More questions. You know, also, guy. I remember we used to use RV parks. And that's still a, yeah. an option. Yeah. I always bring a NEMA 1450 plugged in uh, charger with me just in case. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I remember Robert and I, all, I went all the way to Fairbanks, Alaska and relied a lot on RV parks along the way. So yeah, that's good. good point. But I think for a lot of the, and that, that works well for the uh, early adopters, the advocates, the you know, people are really excited about EVs. As we get into the mainstream, that's a little tougher sell. Like they, they want a car that they don't have to worry about or they don't have to think about, you know. Yeah, if you're pushing for lower income people to have EVs, you have to, they're not going to be able to do all that planning. And, right. you know, the par cars are going to get less expensive, which is great. And then people with uh, that don't have all the time and um, resources to overly research or look, they're going to expect uh, Very true. where they go to be able to plug in somewhere. Yeah. So those are all things, you know, those, again, they're all tied together. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes. that's, that's actually, that's actually the, 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 the minimal issue for them. Their biggest issue is where do they charge daily? Because most times they're either renting and there's no charger there, or they have on street parking and there's no charger, or they live in a, in an apartment or a condo and there's no charging. That's that's the biggest issue for them. It's not sure. so much it's not so much the road trip issue. It's the just daily charging. Where do I do it? And I would agree in multi yeah in multi uh, family you know like in apartment scenarios. In it's going to be so, the same problem. Yeah. Yeah. So and by the way, uh, we are working with uh, the building code change the building codes. So all new apartments and condos will have charging for residents. What's interesting, charging. too, is that the other player here is workplaces and all of us, yeah. if we have a, if we if both the organizations that we participate in, as well as are employed by, we should be asking them to do installation of workplace charging so that yes. people have can charge at the other end of their commute. Unless you're a remote worker. <laughs> right. Well, you know, that's a whole nother thing. But <laughs> but then but then you can insist on workplace charging and you you you're you're your you know, you kind of it's your your employer. You're you're the employer in, in that case, sort of. So yeah. yeah. Any last questions before we pass it on back uh, to Nathan? All right. Well, thank you. Um, my, or our other topic was, um, if anybody, I have a few ideas, but any, since it's the holiday season, if anybody had good, um, gift ideas for the EV lifestyle, you know, EV cars, although they are still vehicles, they are, you know, as we're been talking with charging and with, um, purchasing, um, they require different things. So if anybody had, um, from their own experience or given to other people um, ideas that people can give um, over this holiday, that would be great. Um, I can start. Um, one of mine is specific only to EVs is I got it um, 
as a gift from my family and it's a j1772 lock so when you're charging um and you use that's the the handle or the port for low level charging um uh, the little clip at the uh, on the top of the handle that you push in to plug in that's that locks or that um sets the charger to your vehicle but anyone can just unclip you while you're charging and un um take the handle out of the car so i you, you put this over the handle and it keeps the top um clip engaged so someone can't just take it out i've never experienced someone taking it out of it but it just provides me peace of mind and people can't just like take your handle and put it in their car um they're they're inexpensive you can get them on amazon or i got i think my friend got it on uh, etsy um and then my other um that i got for myself which you can use for any car but it's a uh, a good um, portable air compressor for your tires. Um, tires are really important for any vehicle, but especially with EVs because of the added weight. They're the things that are going to go by the quickest. That's one of the first things with any maintenance with an EV. Um, so take care of your tires. Um, anybody else have any suggestions or ideas? Yeah, I got a couple. I have a couple of comments. Um, you know that 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 uh, J seventeen seventy two looks kind of ingenious, but some cars you actually don't need it because okay. some cars like mine, it does lock the car, locks the handle in. You cannot get that handle out unless you have you're by the car with the key. So oh, so you so you're safe. But but yeah, for everybody else, it's a great idea. Um, and the and the tire compressor too. Um, I like my car. Uh, well my newest car um well neither one has a spare but the newest car um came with a tire repair kit and the and the compressor for that is actually very quick but for those that don't have a compressor or the compressor is incredibly slow because some of them are and that's a good idea too what's the brand of a uh, compressor for me well for i well i don't know maybe for nathan who is oh okay showing well, something oh, you can buy oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. My, mine's just the Volvo brand. It comes with a Volvo, but uh, yeah, I don't know what Nathan's got. Um, it's a Astro AI. Let's see. And you've tried it. Yeah. And it works great. <laughs> just test, just checking. Yep. The other uh, stocking gift that's related to that, Nathan, would be a tire pressure gauge. You, know, so <laughs> you keep up on your, you know, whether you're uh, actually low or not. Yep, and, and I would suggest a digital one. Don't get one of them slider things because they're very inaccurate. So get a get a good one. Yeah, Put another one would be like a window washer that you could carry around with you. Yeah, that's a great idea, Julia. One, Julie, that I know one of the biggest things my husband has noticed as since driving an EV is that the windows never get washed. <laughs> Right, you know, because you're yeah, because you're, you're going, going to a going, gas station you know, where they have station. those amenities. Yeah, so well, more, you, you, you know, you creating can... a similar kind of thing right at home, it's easy for you to grab and clean the windshield. So, so I can tell you what I would want somebody to give me that was EV related. So since we have a an early model, leave with very limited range, I want um, long underwear, earmuffs, and a lap blanket so that I don't even have to use the seat heaters. Um, I, I usually dress <laughs> like um, I'm going on a dog sled when I get into my car for the winter. I, I do that. I do that, even though. though I don't have to do it, but I do it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for another car, Robert. <laughs> uh, we know that we're waiting for the perfect EV, and it's taking a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, next year's EV is always better than this year's, no matter what year you're sitting at. I, I can relate to your comment on the belief with the short range. I had one I was been driving since 2017, and I'm just switching up to something that is about 250 mile range and uh you know i'm really looking forward <laughs> yeah, yeah. to, to we, that a, a cup on the, on the gift idea my my treat was a rather expensive gift i upgraded the <laughs> the charger to plug into my uh 50 amp outlet and i have a a, a charge point charger the flex i think it is and you know the one i had before had no con it had a readout that I could hardly read. It was digital dots and sometimes hard to make out what the numbers were for how much was used. And uh, it, you had no control over the timing of when it goes. And the new one, you know, can match up to the hours that are the low cost hours to charge and so on. And with the added range, I'm now thinking I'll probably charge once a week on the weekend when the sun's shining and use the sunshine directly and not have to charge as much at, at night when it's dark and uh, so on. So, uh, you know, and, and with regard to uh, the issue of the infrastructure and so on, my, my take on this, and, and I did used to work for the Air Resources Board, so I, I first went to Japan to see a, a, a hybrid car, 1998, just on my own, we happened to be there. Uh, but uh, we got our first uh, Prius in 2010, the LEAF in 2017. We upgraded our solar to support the LEAF, and then we um, uh, had extra capacity, so we upgraded to a plug-in Prius and um, to be able to do more electric driving. And um, I'm holding on to that, which handles the, the long-term range issue. We, we went to Yosemite this uh, in, in October, and you know it was amazing to I watch. another one after you're done? Can, can you hear all right? Yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah we, we went to Yosemite and it was amazing, we got, 85 miles free electric going up and down hills in uh, in, in Yosemite. And um, so, it, it, you know, um, it, it, I'm going to be uh, sort of checking out the new car to see how far we can go and, you know, where can we, uh, you know, get charging to and, and see, but, uh, you know, we charge it at home and, and so on. Oh, anyhow, that was sort of my take on some of these topics. Okay, I think we have about four minutes left. I don't know if there's any other random questions or ideas and or... Um, ideas are always good, um, hearing about what you'd like to hear about for our next meeting, which will be in February. Um, that would be great. Also, if you have a suggested site for that, that would be awesome as well. Um, we're trying to do some of the meetings in person like we did with when we were at Muir Commons. So, um, Any comments from Kim or Cherry? Hi, can Hi. You this is Kim. Hi, Hi. Kim. Um, I just wondered what website it is that Robert uses to find out information about Fisker. Uh, you'll have to type it in, Robert. <laughs> That'd be great. The, the website is, it's Fisker's website. Oh, oh he's back. But the, yeah. um, the, the one I've been using is uh, called Fiskerati. How do you spell it? Uh, F-I-S-K-E-R-A-T-I. Okay. Like Maserati, but Fiskerati. 
Mm -hmm. And those are just the owners. And I think Fisker has been monitoring because they do comment on some of the issues. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, oh, hi, I Jerry. Me, uh, come and see yeah. me on uh, Saturday too. Just real quick, uh, you were talking about compressors for the tires. I picked one up at Harbor Freight about a week ago for about 25 bucks. It plugs into your 12 volt cigarette lighter and the, it's really, really quiet compared to the other one I used to have. And the only thing that's a little goofy on it, instead of the flip lock kind of a valve um, connection that it had on my old one that I would sometimes pinch my thumb on it, flipping it down, this one doesn't have that. It has one that just threads right onto the valve. And um, the, the one goofy thing about it is that you have to actually turn it on first before you connect the thing to the tire because the inrush current of the back pressure of the thing will pop the 15 amp fuse. So they tell you, do not connect it to the tire until you've turned it on first. Then you just thread this thing on and it starts pumping up. It's got an analog type gauge. It's not a digital gauge, but it did a great job. But I, I've pumped my tires up to about 50 PSI just for low rolling resistance purposes. And it did all four tiles, tires and I was pretty happy with it. And it's much smaller and much quieter than the one that I had before that had a digital gauge. But like I said, it was, pinched my thumb when I was trying to flip the latch a lot and I ended up with a lot of, you know, sore spots and little black marks on my thumb. <laughs> That's it. Thanks, Thanks Jerry. Jerry. Any suggestions on location for uh, in-person meetings? Do some of the dealerships have some large, uh, meet larger meeting rooms? And Chris? Well, what about that room that we used to use, that one building over on, was it like Fifth Street or something? We used yeah. to meet there all the time. So it's a little more constrained in terms of, they have more, because of COVID, they ended up with spreading their staff out more into the space, and it's a little bit harder to use oh. it for a public meeting space. Oh, okay. Um, okay. And, um, however... We do, um, I think we have a standing offer from some of the um, folks who live at Village Homes to maybe do do an event at Village Homes. Um, uh, we also have been, Cool Davis has been working on doing some home energy outreach with the Stonegate neighborhood. So we've been talking with them. Uh, one of the questions they had, we started talking home energy and someone said, well, you do electric vehicle stuff. Would Could you maybe come and do that with us too? So Stonegate, um, uh, there they have a location. So those are two that we're thinking about. Um, but um, we're kind of looking at, you know, where are some other locations? What could be in a um, in a faith community kind of um, um, a location? Any place that's got a fair, you know, a good size room, meeting room, really. And ideally, uh, we would really like to be able to do a hybrid meeting, and um, so to be able to offer a live stream. Um, during the event uh, so people can what about the public in, but... library don't they have a meeting room you can use they do it's a little less neighborhoody we could use it the, part of our strategy is actually to engage neighbors so that is we would do mm. a particular outreach in the neighborhood um and uh so the library as a place um is definitely one of the um things that we can do and you know we have a new library coming in South Davis, although I don't think we're going to see that for another five or six years. But um, if you are living in a place where you think that it would be fun to bring a diva meeting, like um, we have a couple of members who are uh, live in condo, a condo association, um, for instance, that um, want to you know encourage their other the folks that live nearby to think about getting electric vehicles and and also installing charging devices. Uh, those are all, all possibilities. Well, I guess if we are done for the evening, we will thank you again for joining us. It's great to see everybody um, and look forward to seeing you in the new year. 
Um, uh, just remember the Nathan, I don't know if you want to pitch the leadership team and when they meet. Oh yeah. Um, our next, uh, Diva leadership, if you want to help out with us, plan meetings, um, get speakers, um, is next, um, for this month, next, um, uh, Monday, the 18th, um, at five 30 over zoom. So if you're interested, um, leave a comment, email, um, the, uh, Diva email group and, um, we'll get you signed up. Well, thank you, everybody. Always good to see you. See you in person next time. Yes. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you. It was very interesting. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.